Right, so far we've been looking at uh, arithmetic sequences and series, and now we're going to uh, move into the realm of geometric sequences and series, specifically geometric sequences right now. A geometric sequence is formed by, instead of adding or subtracting what we did with uh, arithmetic sequences, we're going to be multiplying. each term after the first term by a constant again to determine the next term. So I don't know if you remember that one sequence we had before where I said it wasn't an, an arithmetic sequence, the 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Well that was an example of one that's going to be um, geometric. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, 2, 8, 32, 128, the example I have there, is an example of geometric sequence. The first term t sub 1 is 2 and the constant is 4. All right. So this constant, um, if you look, like 2 times 4 gives you 8, 8 times 32, sorry, not, 8 times 4 gives you 32, 32 times 4 gives you 128. So uh, just like we had before that common difference, this time what we're going to call this is we're going to refer to it as the common ratio. And the letter we use to represent that is R. To determine the common ratio, Uh, we're going to divide any term by the preceding term. So if we look up here, let's take these two terms. You're going to take the first term, which was 2, and then we're going to divide 8 by that. So 8 divided by 2, or I could on 32 divided by 8, 128 divided by 32, whatever you want. Each time you still get that solution where your common ratio is equal to 4. So like arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences also can be infinite. So that's where the dots keep going or they can be finite, and that's where it stops somewhere. In addition, geometric sequences can also be divergent or convergent. I just read a book called Divergent. Um, anyways, I'll show you examples of what uh, that means. If you take a look at the sequence 2, 8, 32, 128, they don't really seem to be going towards any value, so we would say that this is divergent. Divergent since the terms do not approach a constant value. So if I had to say what those numbers are approaching, well, they're approaching infinity, I guess, but that's not a constant number. Now, if we look at this one down here, this one, everything's being multiplied by 0.5, if you will. Um, so if you look, well, we have 1, then 1 half, then 1 quarter, then 1 eighth, then 1 32. Those numbers look like they're getting closer and closer to being equal to nothing or a zero. So we would say that this is an example of something that is convergent. Since the terms approach a constant. And in comma here, I'll just put, in this case, zero. Right, so like we had with arithmetic, um, arithmetic, sorry, uh, sequences and series, we had an equation or a formula, and that's what we have right here. For a geometric sequence with the first term t1 and a common ratio r, the general term tn, so we could find any term that we're looking for, is equal to the following. All right. So um, once again, sometimes there'll be questions where we're looking for the nth term or the first term or the common ratio or the number of terms. Same idea here. So, let's take a look at this one. It says, determine the tenth term of the geometric series, sequence, sorry, 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54. Now, you might know something kind of funky about this is that they alternate from uh, positive to negative. Now, if you think about that, though, that doesn't make sense because we can take a positive number, and if you multiply it by a negative, it becomes negative. Multiply it by negative again, it becomes positive. All right? So, let's write down the equation. Tn is equal to T1 times the common ratio onto n minus 1. All right, so um, if you want, you can write the information on the side. I'm going to uh, ignore that for now. All right, so we're looking for the tenth term, so we want t sub 10. We know what the first term is, too. Easy enough. The common ratio, if you look, how much is it going up by? 
Well, it's not so much how much is it going up by, but what is the ratio? Well, if you remember, in order to calculate r, you take one of the preceding terms and divide it by the next. So we could take negative 6 divided by 2 and get negative 3. I don't expect you to be doing that calculation. Most of you can do it in your heads, but some of them are going to be a little bit nastier, so um, you may need to do that at some point. So we have negative 3 all raised to the power of n minus 1. Of course, our n is 10, so we have 10 minus 1. Like so. So now we have 2 all multiplied by negative 3 all raised to the power of 9. Here's a common, common mistake that students are going to go. They're going to go, okay, 2 times negative 3 is equal to negative 6 raised to the power of 9. All right? And that is not going to yield the correct answer. You have to remember your order of operations. So instead here, what we're going to do is you'll most definitely need your calculator here. Not many of you know what uh, 3 raised to the power of 9 is. So I will go brackets negative 3 raised to the power of 9. Do that first. I get that answer. And now I multiply that by 2. And we have negative 39,366. All right. You'll notice I also put the brackets in the calculator. I would encourage you to do that. Um, if you leave out the brackets sometimes, what will happen is it will neglect the negative there, um, or if we're multiplying it by, or so if we're raising it to an even power, we won't get the uh, negative solution that we're looking for. So please use the brackets. So I'll just write that. Use brackets. All right, first example in the bank. Example two. All right, uh, I think we got two more here. Create a geometric sequence whose sixth term is 27. So I'm giving you some uh, leeway right here. So again, we can draw ourselves a picture. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just asking you to make this term 27. Now there is many, many, many solutions. All right, that you could do. You could. They're they're countless, really. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pick one that is, is somewhat easy for us. So if you remember, in order to get these terms, what we're doing is we're multiplying it by this common ratio. So for a question like this, I'll make a little note down here in blue. Um, it works best to use a factor when choosing kind of messy, a uh, common ratio. Okay, because what we're looking for is we're looking for some number. Like, for instance, if you said, like, this term over here is going to be, uh, like, 1, well, then you might want to multiply it by 9. 1 times 9 is uh, 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Obviously, that's not going to work, right? So rather than just guessing and testing right here, what we'll do is we'll look at some of the factors of 27. So 27, we have 1 goes into it, 3 goes into it, 9 goes into it, 27 goes into it. All of those would work. Um, let's, I don't know, let's use 3. Let's go with 3. So in order to go this way, right, we multiply by 3. In order to go this way, we're going to divide by 3. And I think you're going to find it easier to think of that. So 27 divided by 3 gives me a solution there of 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And now it gets a little bit more complicated. What's 1 divided by 3? Well, it's just 1 third. Okay, and I'd encourage you to write it like that rather than the repeating decimal. And then if you take 1 third and divide it by 3, you get 1 ninth. And so if we were going to go in the opposite direction, times by 3, one, uh, sorry, 1 ninth times 3 is 1 third, 1 third times 3 is 1, and so on. Okay, so that's how to do a question like that. Um, you'll see those on, on occasion. Okay. A couple of the more uh, difficult ones. Here we go, example 3. It says, in a finite geometric sequence, the first term is equal to 7, and the fifth term is 567. Determine the second term and the sixth term. So, if we can find out what this common ratio is, we're probably going to be off to the races. So, let's take a look at the information we know. We know the first term over here is 7. The fifth term is equal to 567. Um, do we know anything else? Well, since they're telling you this fifth term is 567, we know that n is equal to 5. So, let's use that for now. All right. Let's take our equation. And remember, what we're trying to look for is that ratio. If we find that ratio, then we're off to the races. So the equation is Tn is equal to the first term times your common ratio, all raised to the power of n minus 1. T sub n, in this case, okay, is going to be this fifth term, okay, because we've said that n is equal to 5. So T sub 5, I'm going to put in right here, 567. 567 is equal to my first term, 7, times my common ratio, 
So for this time, we don't know what the common ratio is, so we're going to use r. And now we have n minus 1. Well, we know n is 5, so we have 5 minus 1. So we have 567 is equal to 7, all multiplied by your common ratio, raised to the power 4. And so what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what this magical r is. So we need to isolate that r. If you recall, we dealt with square roots last year. We're going to have to do something kind of like that here. So in order to isolate it, I'm going to divide both sides by 7. We get r to the power of 4 is equal to 81. That's a lovely answer. Now, in order to get rid of the fourth root of something, we need to take the, sorry, the fourth power, we need to take the fourth root. Okay. So we're going to get r is equal to, and you can do this on your 81 raised to the power of, I hit the wrong button there, um, 1 divided by 4. And we should get 3. There we go. Now the answer is 3. Now, if you wrote your answer as 3 right there, you would be only kind of half right. Because it turns out, when I ask for the fourth root of 81, what I'm saying is, what numbers can multiply to give you a solution of 81? So it's saying that 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. 3 is a good answer. But it also turns out that you can have negative 3. Think, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. But negative 27 times a negative 3 gives you 81. All right, so you've got to be careful for those. Um, whenever you're taking the square root of something, you could get a plus or minus, so watch out for those. So let's write down a little uh, sketch here with six terms. So we have the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, and sixth term. Okay. Uh, we know the first term was 7. We know that the fifth term was 567. And uh, let's uh, give this guy a try. So if the common ratio is plus or minus 3, then that means that this next term, t sub 2 right here, could either be plus or minus 21. If we multiply it by 3, this next term could be plus or minus 63. Okay. Now, that is where we've made a little mistake. Because if you take a look, Let's say, for instance, that we said that this was going to be a negative. We know that whatever is an odd term must be positive here. So this must be plus or minus, but this one must be a positive 63. Okay. Let me give you another example here. Let's say I take this positive 63 and I multiply it by a negative. This next term could be negative 89. But if I was to multiply it by a positive 3, it could also be positive. But no matter what I multiply this 189 by, a positive or a negative, it's going to make this 567 positive. Okay. So to answer the question, we found that t2 is negative 21. Okay. It was also looking for, I believe, the sixth term. So we still have to take 567, and our answer is going to be either plus or minus. So 567 times 3 gives you 1,701. All right. Now, if you want me to explain this a little bit further, I have a feeling this might be a little bit foggy, this part with the plus or minus thing. Remind me next class, I'd be happy to address this. Okay. Last question. It says the last term in that sequence right there is 45,927. How many terms are in the sequence? So essentially, they're looking for n. So we take our equation. Tn is equal to t1 plus the common ratio, all raised to the power of n minus 1. All right. And let's take a look. Well, Tn, this mystery term that we're looking for, is 45,927. We know that the first term in that sequence was, of course, 7. We know that the common ratio is either plus or minus 3. So let's go with 3 for now. Okay. And now we raise it to the power of n minus 1. Okay. Now, once again, common mistake students will make is they'll go 7 times 3 is 21. We don't want to do that. We want to isolate. Um, our exponent here in a second. And this is something you'll get into uh, when you get into Math 12, but we're going to kind of do a little guess and check thing here. Um, but first of all, we can get rid of this 7 that's out front. Okay. So what we can do is we can divide both sides by 7. Those will cancel. When you divide 45,927, I've already done this a little bit earlier, but you get 6,561, which is equal to 3, raised to the power of n minus 1. And from here it becomes guess and check a little bit. So we're looking for what power of n, well, it makes 6,561. 
Now, you guys might not have a clue where to start. Uh, let's start with making an... Alright, so let's, uh, let's try 3 raised to power.